Hey everybody, this is a bit of a different setup, but it's the same great Johannes. I came across this Twitter channel called White Men Are Stupid in Commercials, or White People Are Stupid in Commercials. It's a collection of, well, commercial videos, uh, mostly from the United States, where the white man is cast as a comical sidekick. The usually opposite of a black woman who is presented as the more mature, calmer, more intelligent being. But the phenomenon by no means restricts itself to the United States. We see the same in Germany or the Netherlands or England, where usually the white man is cast as a sucker, an idiot, a goofball, you know, a bit of a low IQ, low brow simpleton who gets things wrong, who thinks that, you know, white Ku Klux Klan hats are fun, or uh, he thinks that uh, Nelson Mandela proves that prison works because, well, he came out straightened out, right? So there's a lot more to it than you think, though. Uh, at first sight, it is a reversal of what United States American cinema used to do. Hollywood cinema used to cast the Negro Man, as the comical sidekick and uh, many movies from the 1960s, 70s, 80s and so on, even even 1990s, there would often be a black man there in the cast, but he wouldn't have as much to say. For example, in the original Planet of the Apes movie with Charlton Heston, there's also a black guy in the team. He almost has no lines. He's just there for the visual representation. Or also in the original Ghostbusters movie, there's this black guy who, again, has very little to say, doesn't speak a lot of words. And it all comes down to that older archetype of the black-faced Negro played by a white man, basically often to uh, ridicule black men. But that's not where this ends. You see, there's a lot more to it. Uh, if you look at some very successful comedians... Uh, Ricky Gervais, more recently than, for example, uh, John Cleese, who plays in uh, Life of Brian or Faulty Towers, this old TV series, or even uh, Rowan Atkinson, who plays Mr. Bean, is that they, these three men that I mentioned, when they play their comedy act, uh, Ricky Gervais in The Office, for example, um, they play a white man, but they play, a, they play first and foremost a caricature of a white man, and then they mock that caricature as well, essentially completely debasing uh, any notion of authority, dominance, power, and so on and so forth. If you do this repeatedly on a large enough scale for a long enough time, you know, over the past 30, 40, 50 years or so, the white man is being portrayed as a simple moron, uh, over time, the purpose of this Marxist comedy washing is to degrade or to belittle the white man so that eventually no one, even white men themselves, will take a uh, white man serious in a position of power in the office, for example, as a manager or as a CEO or as a general or a military leader or even as just a man, as in Mr. Bean. This is actually called racism. I mean, if it is racism to mock a black man in a black-faced you know, rehearsal on stage, for example, it is equally racist to portray a white man as a sucker who should hold no position of power or authority, even in not, not even in his own countries or in his own societies. And similarly, you may also have uh, seen The Daily Show by Jon Stewart or uh, The Colbert Report by... Uh, Stephen Colbert, uh, they do the same thing. They also, they look white, they're Jewish, but they look white and they portray uh, white men as either, uh, you know, bamboozled suckers who don't know right from wrong, who don't know that uh, Nelson Mandela was imprisoned unjustly and that uh, prison obviously did not make him better because prison doesn't work. Like, we don't know that, right? We're all stupid. The point that I just wanted to discuss is that none of this is a coincidence. There is an actual Marxist theory around using humor as a way to mock people in power. It is also for this reason that when 
they finally had the black Obama as president of the United States, all of a sudden these lefty Democrat comedians didn't want to mock Obama at all because now there's a black man in power. You cannot belittle him. You cannot make fun of him because that would diminish the sense of a black person having power. Uh, now they have the black vice president Kamala Harris who, <laughs> who doesn't even need a comedian to make a fool of her because she's just absolutely rabidly stupid woman. She's uh, probably uh, a clinical moron, I would say. Uh, that means having an IQ below 70. Uh, doesn't she have ghost writers who write her script? I mean, I'm doing this off the top of my head, you know, making it up as I go. Even I make more sense than Kamala Harris, who is supposed to have a script written for her by her screenwriters, her ghost writers behind the scenes, who can tell her exactly what to say, and she still can't manage to say it. You know, it's a tossed salad, the salad bowl full of words, and she's like, oh, bing bong. Because of the bing bongness in the bing bongism, that's we got to do bing bong. I mean, that woman is so incredibly stupid, even George W. Bush was more verbally eloquent than her. And that's something. But all of it taken together, you know, the mockery of the caricature of the stupid white man is taken together uh, a, a racist attack on the very power position of the white man. You know that the left-wing Marxists, they want to, well, genocide white men, probably, get rid of us and replace us with black men. If we have to, you know, if you watch the TV commercials, you can, you can watch TV commercials a whole evening, even in the Netherlands or Germany, you will, you will not see a single white couple where, uh, you know, a white woman and a white man. You will see only white women with arabesque or African or other Asian types of men. Uh, and the white man is consistently portrayed as, a, as, a, as an imbecile. Uh, this is genocidal scapegoating. You are literally targeting a class of people, white men, and you are telling the world and white men themselves that they shouldn't even hope to hold any important position in their own societies because, well, <laughs> they're white men, <laughs> they're stupid, everybody knows they're stupid, so why even try, right? How do you counter this? Well, first of all, you would have to control the media narratives. It's probably one of those reasons why the Biden administration has already said they're going to crack down on Twitter. You don't, you don't want white men to have free speech. On Twitter, it turns out they had an, a CEO with roots from India. They had this uh, censorship czar, Vijaya, whatever she was called, also from, with roots from India, basically telling white men in the West they cannot have a voice. Uh, the same goes on on Facebook and other major platforms. So the alternative platforms are immediately targeted for their free speech problem, right? Whether it's Gab or even Truth Social or now uh, Twitter under Elon Musk. They don't want white men to have a voice. Why not? Because we are competent people. Yeah, some of, some of some of the white men in our own ranks are incredibly competent people who should be in charge, who should be in power. Not doofy McDoofus Joe Biden, who I think is at this point demented, and not his retarded sidekick Kamala Harris. Surely there are other people who are sane and competent who should be in their positions. Maybe it's not Trump. I'm not a fan of Trump. I think Trump is a showman. We need somebody with, you know the acuity of mind to lead the most powerful nation that also represents the most powerful white economy, or at least the economy where the most powerful economy where the majority of people are still white. And so in conclusion, um, my idea is we need to turn the tables. We need to start using comedy as a weapon against these lefty comedians. How, for example, could we make a mockery of the comedians who are making a mockery of white men? How do you make a mockery of Ricky Gervais? He's very talented and very powerful. How do you do it? How would you make a mockery of uh, John Cleese's old archetypes? How do you make a mockery of Mr. Bean? Meaning, meaning how do you make a mockery of the people making a mockery of white men? That's where we need to go to. We need to find, you know, the wit within ourselves, well, you know, we need to find the funny people in our own ranks 
who can pull that off so that we can show the world that two can play that game. You can make fun of us all you want for 50 years or so, but at some point, the fun's over. <laughs>